Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Hitakiri Singh. Thank you for joining me here. We have a couple of Gajalakas and a screaming ruiner Narragante. Nergagante back there. He's pissed. Anyways, thanks for joining me today. Today's video is all about the uh, what I feel is the most efficient way to farm the Guiding Lands, um, or as we affectionately call it, the Grinding Lands, because there's a lot of grinding to be done in here. Uh, but the reason I titled this video the most efficient way is because there's a lot of things you can kind of do concurrently there's a lot of tricks uh, tips there's a lot of things to know about the nodes and the geology skill and just a lot of little things that can help the farm happen much quicker because you can do a lot of things kind of concurrently in your runs uh, rather than having to farm one thing or the other or the other um, so this is just a little way I like to farm the guiding lands that I feel like I get the biggest bang for my buck and it's gonna center around a few tips that I want to go ahead and explain right now uh, and then we're gonna go, sh go ahead and show it in option one one is there's a little glitch in the guiding lands uh, that a lot of people know about but a lot of you newer uh um, Monster Hunter players that are coming from this new wave of players might not is if you have even one level of the geologist skill in your build and in this one I have a gathering setup that has it maxed out uh, any shiny parts drop that you get from a monster in the guiding lands you can actually pick up twice uh, for some reason, there's a little glitch that they never factored out, and now it's just part of the game. So, yay us, because this is a very grindy area. So, anything you can do to make this grind a bit more efficient can really um, save that mentality and space between the ears, uh, but also just save time and things like that, you know? Um, so, that's a good thing to know. We'll go into all the details about that a, a little bit later. Uh, but there's also a couple of other things that you want to know about the nodes. You have these mining and bone nodes um, that if they have three levels, one, two, and three, and when you get to the fourth level, they unlock a giant version, so you can get a specific part that everybody thinks that they want and go ahead and mine, but it's actually best not to mine the big one, and we'll go into those details about what, uh, why not. Uh, also, also, we're going to talk about builds, we're going to talk about food, we're going to talk about item layouts, uh, menu options, so there's a, there's a lot of little things that you can do to really optimize this process, and that's what we're going to do. Oh, and we're going to talk about Kelby horn farming. Uh, Kelby horn farming, farming is uh, really important in the gu uh, guiding lands because it gives you the very best method to get them and uh, so when you craft immunizers with Kelby horns you get ancient potions that completely max out your health and stamina and you can only carry two but you can carry 10 Kelby horns and 10 immunizers to give you another 10 during a battle. Uh, it's just the Kelby horn part of this farm uh, about getting those 10 Kelby horns in your inventory is kind of difficult if you don't know exactly where to farm them. And we're going to talk about the very best way to do that as well. Anyways, thanks for listening to me ramble. Let's get into the bulk of this video. Oh, I got some stuff coming up as well. We're going to have some rank sessions with Raven. I'm working on Yoshimitsu finally, and I'm really, really liking him. I'm like two days old with him in the lab, so give me about a week to mess around with him. And we're going to start doing some Yoshimitsu streams as well. More Monster Hunter streams. we got some theme streams coming up. We're going to try to do four Helm Splitters on Facebook. Talus's head. That's probably going to be our very next Monster Hunter stream coming up maybe um, in a couple of days here. Actually, I'm gathering the squad. We're talking on Discord. Discord, Come join us if you want to join our squad. Zero faints. Um, just send me a message. We'll make it happen, man. We'll make it happen. Uh, and Akuma for Street Fighter 6. When he comes out, we're all over Akuma. I love Akuma as a character. And uh, we're just, I learn him in every single game. Uh, you should check out some of my Akuma Tekken 7 highlights and you'll see pretty much the baddest and best combos and techniques Akuma has to offer that's a real Akuma mains we learn that stuff in any game he's in we just love Akuma anyways thanks for listening to me ramble uh, oh one more thing a shout out to all the female gamers out there you guys go through a lot of crap online this is just my call for everyone to be civil towards each other and uh, learn how to you know, live in a free society and have respectful differences of opinions, but just be kind and respectful to everyone. There's no harm, no foul in that ever. Anyways, let's get into the video. All right, the first thing we're going to need before we can efficiently farm the Guiding Lands is a good gathering set. We're going to use this one that I created, and let's go over all the jewels uh, that you're going to need and the equipment. 
okay uh, you can do this with any set guys uh, but most of us that are farming the guiding lands are generally looking for things that become available after master rank 100 like getting your guiding lands up to level 7 um, so I'm guessing most of you have your fatalis gear if not uh, you don't need your fatalis gear a lot of these things that are in this build are are not necessary um, they're just quality of life but we'll go over all of that um, you want to have one piece of equipment that has your frost fang um, uh, just one piece of frost fang equipment basically you want punishing draw you want some stun effect uh, I'm saying that to the long sword users but any weapon that has stun effect you're fine you don't need this piece uh, but you want to have a stun effect and we'll we'll go into that a little later uh, your pieces of equipment, you're going to have your gathering charm, uh, this allows you to gather much faster. You're going to have a ghillie mantle, so you can escape danger if you need to. And uh, you're going to have the assassin's hood. Sorry about that, I just had a little coughing fit. Um, yeah, but basically that's all your equipment. If you don't have the assassin's hood because that is was a temporary uh, quest that's no longer available, just use your temporal mantle. Anything basically for defense so you don't take any damage, but you don't really have to worry about that. Um, the main point of this is just going to be to run around and gather, and you're hardly going to run into monsters, and when you do, you'll easily be able to get away with this set. Uh, and the Gatherer's Charms give you, gives you the skill Master Gatherer and Carving Pro. You're not going to really carve anything. Well, you could, but we'll go into that in just a second. The main skills you want to have are all your gathering skills. Uh, number one is a hard geology jewel. You want your geology jewel to be level three, so you can uh, mine one extra time from all the mining posts and all the bone outcrops. All right. Have a warming jewel and a cooling jewel, just so you can go in any environment and not worry about that. Same goes with your miasma, um, your fluvial resistance. It's level two. I didn't want to waste a level one gem on one of these, so I just stuck the other one in my ghillie mantle. Um, so worst case scenario, if that becomes an issue, I can just put on my ghillie mantle and not worry about it. Okay. Uh, hard specimen jewel. This just lets you carve one extra time if you're capturing insects, you know, how they just explode on you and there's nothing to carve. Uh, put this on and they'll always leave a corpse behind at level three um, so you can carve. And with Carving Pro from your Master Gatherer charm, you can often carve twice from them. Uh, hard Botany basically uh, lets you uh, one extra consumable herb, fruit, nut, seed, insect, anything you can gather that's not everything else. You get an extra one basically. Uh, Alright, Hard Intimidator is just to have this maxed out, uh, so this just makes it less likely that monsters will engage with you if they're around you. Uh, same thing with this Tiptoe Jewel, it's level 2 stealth, might as well, you don't need anything offensive in this thing, we're just going to run around and gather, so uh, Tiptoe just helps you stay stealthy. Um, these are all these slots I was talking about, if you don't have uh, Fatalis gear, these are all optional. I just maxed out my Divine Blessing, and I maxed out my Flinch Free, uh, put a couple of Wind Resist in there, maxed out my uh, Medicine uh, Jewels, uh, just in case I need a heal for some reason, but... You you never have to really worry about that but if you have the space you can put some quality of life stuff in there um, and really that's about it for this build you also want to have one other build for when you're just farming monsters and you want to get the double drops um, so you don't really uh, need to get anything else in the guiding lens just the double drops and you always just want to have one geology jewel slotted in there, but also what goes really well with doing this is part breaker. Make sure you have your part breaker max. I just replaced in my normal build my coalescence with part breaker, so I have level three part breaker. Um, so when we're doing this method of using one geology jewel in the guiding lands to get whatever bone related uh, monster parts we can drop um, or any drop that you can get double of uh, you want to break as many of those parts as possible to get as many shiny drops as possible it's ridiculous the amount of drops you can get if you're playing multiplayer and all three people have uh, parts breaker maxed out um, and you have one geology jewel you'll get so many parts it's ridiculous so that's about it uh, your other build is just whatever you normally use just sub out something so you can put one geology jewel somewhere in there mine's right here and max out your part breaker or get as much part breaker as you can just to get more of the shiny drops to collect twice okay that's about it for the builds you'll need um, oh uh, one more point I wanted to make about the previous build 
Uh, just to explain the mantles. So, Gilly Mantles to stay hidden. Assassin's Hood is really good because you just run really fast with it. You can't put any jewels in it, but you put that on and you can run from location to location like crazy, and it's wonderful. And really, that's about it for the builds. All right, guys. Um, there's a couple of food skills out there that are really handy when you're running around gathering. And, you know, we've talked about um, gathering and efficiently farming so you're farming a lot of different things so this can really come in handy uh, I've created this food setup for gathering and let's go over the skills um, all of these are just two ingredient skills so you just need two of those ingredients and they're all from the spirit section uh, you have feline harvester this reduces the uh, amount of time between the response for the gathering point so like your mining and your bones after you um, mine them it takes a certain amount of time for them to respawn and that amount of time that it respawns is kind of random so it might respawn quickly one time but not the next you know um so this just shortens that time uh, to the point of you don't ever have to run the entire guiding lands and map out everything to gather you know unless you need things but honestly i would recommend if you need specific things to focus on like one or two regions uh like uh i like to do the coral and the cold region because uh, mainly all i'm really farming nowadays is the dragon dragon vein coal coal uh, and I'm not specifically farming it I just get it you know sometimes um, so this just allows me to run between two regions and constantly farm instead of having to do like the entire map or anything like that you know it's really helpful uh, the other one is this feline iron carver prevents knockbacks while you're carving um, you know this is not so handy uh you know for monsters because you're not going to be using uh fighting any monsters in the gathering build but sometimes when you're needing to collect bugs or, or those kind of things and you're carving uh, it's not the greatest uh, quality of life skill out there but you know it could come in handy every now and then uh, and the other one I like is feline gardener this reduces the amount of time for certain endemic life to re reappear uh, and with this this makes Kelby horn farming the very most efficient to do in the guiding lands versus anywhere else you know uh, we'll talk more about Kelby horns and their importance and um, uh, though different ways you can farm them, um, but you always want to gather your Kelby horns, and this just helps for the farm on that pretty uh, significantly. So, uh, the other skill that's out there that you might want is Feline Researcher. Uh, let's say you're using the build where you're just uh, fighting the monsters and you have the one geology uh, and the part breakers and so forth. Uh, use your Researcher because when you're fighting these tempered uh, level monsters, uh, I guess you could use it for other monsters, but the main thing is to collect the threat level 3 investigation. You need to uh, collect the trails of these tempered level elder uh, dragons. Uh, and that is the very best way to farm sealed face stones. You can get four or five uh, guaranteed sealed face stones per fight, if not more, actually. Um, but it's the best way to farm those things. So if you're not specifically needing any other of these gardeners, you're not farming Kelby horns or farming nodes or anything like that, uh, take some researchers so you can get more of those investigations and farm more decorations and jewels. So uh, other than that, I just I think that's pretty much the three good skills to know uh, for the efficient farm. All right, let's go on to the next segment. And one more thing that might seem like a slight oversight, but uh, make sure you have not much in your pouch when you're gathering. You're going to be gathering a lot of stuff, and you don't want to be full all the time. Uh, so when I gather, I created this items loadout, and it basically just has the bare essentials that I, I wanted in there. Uh, much harms for my buffs, even though none of this is really necessary. I just, I don't know. I can't bear to lose these things, guys. Like, I always have to include this in every items loadout. Something in me will not allow me not to have that. Anyways, have a far caster, a uh, couple max potions, uh, rations maybe, uh, mega potions maybe, just to have, probably don't even need those two, but just some emergency items just in case, and keep this pretty much as free as possible for all the good stuff we're going to be hunting and gathering and all this wonderful things. Next point is to make sure you bring your palico with you. Uh, and also, not just your palico, if there's any tail raiders that are nearby, uh, boa boas, other people's palicos that show up in stages, grab one. 
both of these guys will passively gather for you. Not every time. Um, and you don't always see the animation, but sometimes you do. But at the end of the quest, you'll see a whole list of stuff that they gathered. And, um, you know, if you're gathering for more spots with Harvester and all this stuff, these guys are going to gather way more as well, increasing your efficiency and just getting more loot. So make sure you bring these cute, cuddly... Well, this one's kind of scaly. But bring these guys, for sure. And also... Uh, bring your pl plunder bra uh, excuse me plunder blade uh, if you're using the other set that has the one geology while you're fighting monsters might as well have your palico start stealing some stuff off them as well all right let's go on to the next segment all right the next uh, helpful tip slash trick whatever you want to call it, is um, when you're going into the Guiding Lands, uh, not so much for gathering. If you're gathering, you always want to gather solo because there's something you want to do with all the nodes that if somebody doesn't know what you're doing, it can kind of mess up your efficiency in the farm that you're trying to create. So gathering is always done solo. But let's say you're going into the Guiding Lands. Uh, Namiel is a good reason because Namiel, a tempered level uh, in Coral Region 7, you need to gather uh, its parts to get your health region augment on your weapon so a lot of people fight that so let's say you're going in and you want to bust up some parts on an amiel this you do want to do in a group so make sure you put that in your target monster for your guiding lands uh, or let's say you're looking for while at the same time you want to mine um dragon vein coal while you're there so there's a purpose for some of these things so put that in there so now you want to send a flare because um, you want to do this multiplayer because if other people like i mentioned in another segment i, I don't know what order this is going to be in so maybe i haven't but if everybody's running part breaker you're going to get a whole lot more shiny drops this isn't the regular stages this is the guiding lands um, you get these aren't part breaks that always specifically have to happen for you to get the shiny drops you know you get shiny drops a lot in the guiding lands so if everybody's wearing part breakers and you have your one level of geology uh, you will gather ungodly amounts of shiny drops i mean very similar to the giant great jaggers event i mean it, it can be like that if you have a group of four that's decked out with part breaker it can be exactly like that if not more really so you know let people know and shoot off your flares and uh so when people are going to join your quest they will build specifically for namiel and when i started doing this mining of uh, um for the coal uh coral uh um, just for the dragon vein coal. This is not when I'm gathering and want to do specific things with the nodes. I noticed that when I put this on there, everybody would start mining after the fight. And it was pretty cool because you want those tier level four uh, rewards. Um, so sometimes you can farm that kind of stuff while you're doing. I mean, that's what this video is all about is efficiency, doing multiple things at once. You don't do everything at once, but you can do multiple things at once. So uh, make sure you use these features to get some people involved into your farm that you want. All right, let's go on to the very next segment. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, the first thing I want to talk about uh, farming in the Guiding Lands is actually the Kelby Horns. And uh, these uh, segments are just going to come as, you know, uh, points in the video. Uh, but just keep in mind that all these points that we talk about, I'm actually going to be doing these actually concurrently when we're actually doing the gathering. So the gathering, I might not show the actual way I gather because I want to individually teach you about separate things. Um, but just remember that. Uh, but anyways, Kelby Horns, why are these so important? Uh, we want our ancient potions, guys. Uh, you only can hold, uh, what, one of them? Uh, maybe two? No, two is max potions. One of them. So if you can get... 10 immunizers and 10 kelby horn uh, you can craft 10 more ancient potions and uh, this is very important and almost needed in certain fights like fatalis or arch temper valkana or i don't know a furious rejang or anything that you're really really struggling with you know but kelby horns are kind of hard to come by basically um they're only available in a couple of regions in either the coral region or the Wildspire Waste. In the Wildspire Waste, you want to start off in the Southwest Camp 1, and there's a spot that a bunch of them spawn. Uh, Coral, there's a couple of spots that they spawn. I'm not really showing them because they all get outmatched with how you can farm them in the Guiding Lands, so there's really no point in going there. Um, but yeah, those are the two places you can farm them. And... But I don't really touch those places. What I do is, my Argosy is set on consumables, so when he shows up, sometimes I get some Kelby horns. 
any in here? No. But I generally don't go for parts or anything like that. I just always go for the consumables. The other way you can kind of do those in Celiana um, or Astera is go to this dude bro here. Forgot his name. Housekeeper dude bro. And you're going to send out your Tail, tail Raider uh, Safari. See, I got a couple right there. But these are minuscule ways to get them because, you know, you want 10 in your inventory. And then if you use all of them, like, you don't want to have to farm 2 to 4 to 6 at a time. And it'll take hours, you know. Um, but I do always keep these guys running uh, either... See, this one has two Kelbys right here. You see those icons, so you get a couple on those. Uh, I always check them out. This one has two, and it has these two little circle icons on the top right, so you'll get more. So that's kind of what I'm looking for is the most Kelbys with the little icons in the top right. This only has one. This only has one. And sometimes you can get them in the Guiding Lands as well. But it seems like the best one is right here, so that's what we're going to choose. But again, these are just supplemental ways to get them. Um, the Before I show you how to get them, uh, the point I made about using the Frost Fang, anything really, is you need to have a stun effect on your weapon um, because... Uh, the longsword is not a stun weapon, and it does create a situation where any sheathed attack now inflicts stun, and you're going to need that for the Kelby Horn farm in the Guiding Lands. And let's jump into that. All right, we just got to the Guiding Lands, and uh, first point is you want to eat in the Guiding Lands because, oh, damn, I'm out of gourmet vouchers. That's no good. I'm always running low on those things nowadays. Uh, go ahead and eat your gathering me meal here. Uh, the reason is uh, you might need to go in and out of the Guiding Lands a, a couple of times. It doesn't usually take long, maybe three or four times max. Uh, to make sure in the Coral region you have the Kelbys and not the Shamos uh, for the Kelby Horn Farm. Okay? Um, so the reason we want to have stun on our sheathed attacks for your longsword or just stun in general because Kelbys will always, always, always drop a Kelby horn if you hit them in the head with a stun attack. Uh, you can't uh, hit them with an attack that's not a stun attack. So for longsword users, if your sword is already out and you do an attack, uh, it's not a sheathed attack. You don't get the stun value. Just have your weapon already sheathed and hit triangle. That's the perfect one. Uh, you can also hit R2 if you really want to. So anyways, you come up to these Kelby. Just aim at their head. Boom. They will always drop this Kelby horn. Every single time. And if you just hit them once, you won't actually kill them. Because I don't really like to kill them. Uh, but I will if I have a small monster culling thing. You know, just get somewhere close to their head. They'll drop these things. And everyone will give you one. You can't collect these twice. Um, not all drops in the Guiding Lands can you collect twice. But most of the monster ones you can. It's something to do with the classifications on and whether uh, the monster has bone drops or not. Whether you can collect it twice. I don't know 100% sure. But just to let you know, from these Kelby, you can't do it twice. Uh, then you run up here and there's going to be several more. So this is the best farm because of how many there are in a small area. And just right now I'm probably going to pick up about 8-ish or so. Um, so like I said before, we're going to be farming a lot of other things. And as we're doing these farms, these guys are going to respawn very, very quickly. Oops. Uh, because of the food skill that we ate. Oh, I missed his head. See? It didn't drop because I missed his head. And now they're all agitated. <laughs> uh, but they'll stop. So, just aim at their head. Got that. And I'm not going to show them respawning, but they respawn much quicker uh, because of the food skill. Uh, but anyways, that's it. So while you're doing your other farming, you go ahead and farm these Kelby. And I'd say, I don't know, in an hour while you're doing everything else, you'll probably walk out of here with like 50-ish Kelby horns. You're just going to have to, uh, you know, go back to camp once you get a certain amount, 10. No, I think Kelby horns you can hold up to 99. So if you get up to 99, then, uh, you know, just go back to camp.
and just restock your regular old items that we created for gathering. It puts them all in your inventory, boxed inventory, and you carry on gathering. Anyways, uh, that's going to be the very best way to gather these Kelby Horns. You can get a ton of them. Well, comparatively. You know, this is the grinding lands, as we say. Um, and everything in Monster Hunter takes some time. Um, so that's why these efficiencies in these things can be really helpful. So you have a bunch of them there. Um, let's just go ahead and show from the Coral region again. I know it's my favorite region. But let's get into the topic of the nodes. Okay, so... Uh, this confuses a lot of people, and it confused me forever until, uh, I believe it was Pain Senpai, or maybe it was Kuvi, uh, one of our squad mates, uh, viewers slash subscribers turned squad mates, so if you guys are watching and are on PlayStation and want to join a awesome squad that is going to try to do some really awesome stuff on stream and present it to the world, uh, let me know. Uh, but anyway, so this confuses a lot of people about uh, our good old friends, the mining nodes and the bone nodes. Uh, I did go ahead and collect the two large, large versions of it, so they're not in the map anymore, um, so we can start making our points. Okay, so you have bones and these mining things right here. Um, they have four levels. The fourth level, I might have misspoke earlier, is actually the big giant ones you see. Uh, and there's a way to prevent the fourth one from showing up, and it's going to be really beneficial to you, and we'll discuss that in a second. But first, got to know there's three levels of this. This is already at level three, and the first level is going to be really small. Um, let's go ahead and make these small again. Okay, so two points I want to make out of here. We got two Dragon Vein Coal Chunks because this is a level 3 node. The higher the level of the node, the better the rewards you're going to get. And also, I want you to note that with my Geologist Max, I was able to mine that four times. Uh, normally it's three, but with Geology Max, it's four. And with the Bones, this is another level 3. We'll come back to that. Uh, with the Bones... With Geology Max, you can mine four times without it... Oh, sorry, five times without it, it's four. Um, the reason I want you to remember this is this is going to be important into knowing why you want to farm the way we're about to farm. Okay, so these guys are both level three. See the size of them? They're pretty big, you know? Um, so let's go ahead, and I might uh, fast-forward some of this stuff because I'm going to go ahead and reset this stuff. Okay. So we have level threes. You mine level threes. Nice. Give me those chunks. And you eventually mine enough level threes and a level four, the biggest one that you can only mine from once, appears. And then when you are done, uh, after it goes to level four, then these things reset back to level one, which is the small one, and level two, the medium one. Again, this is level three. And I want to show it to you, and I want to show you something, too. Um, the level 3 ones will... Oh, see, more Kelby appeared. Let's go ahead and get some more Kelby. And this is what I mean. All these things are going to be done c concurrently. There's a ton of other things that you might want to pick up. Mite seeds, adamant seeds, god bugs, bitter bugs. They're all here, you know? They're all here, so we're all doing... Uh, um, these things concurrently. Uh, another big bone pile. Let's go ahead and collect that. Collected five times with max geology. And it'll notify you when the large ones appear. So as I was saying, you have three levels of them. Uh, the weaker ones give you, the smaller ones give you less of a rewards and smaller dragon vein chunks, you know. Um, so generally, you're you're looking to build them up to get um, to the big ones, basically, you know. And so what most people do is they build them up from level one to level two to level three, and then they do the fourth one um, to get one, you know. In this one, I think it's called a guiding reef crystal. You know, it's the crystals that you want from these things. But um, here's the thing that most people don't realize: the crystals actually have a decent chance of 
uh, well, it's a small chance of spawning from the level three nodes, the one just off the big ones, you know? Um, so there's a, a way you can do it where you farm from level one to level two to level three, but you never farm enough from level three for the big ones to um, spawn. Why is this important to you? Why is this beneficial to you? Well, because if you now have in this area, at the end of the day, there's about four or five bone piles and there's about four or five uh, mining piles, you know? So if you're using your geology skill and mining constantly at level three nodes for the bones or for the mines, um, you're always uh, giving yourself a chance of getting those uh, crystals without having to build all the way up to level four then as soon as you're getting it from level four because you're going to need multiple crystals then all your spawns go all the way back to level one and um, then you have to do and rinse and repeat the process so this is the method that you're going to use to prevent that actually first before I show you the method uh, let me show you on the map so you see you have these, they show where your nodes are, uh, and they have different colors. So you might not have known the importance of it and might have been wondering what's, what's the significance of this. Um, so in the coral region, which is the third one down, what we want to do is get the bones and the mining into the red so it's a full red gauge. I don't have any of them quite full, but when it gets full, it's going to be a darker shade of red than it already is. Once it's at that level, if you continue to mine the level three nodes, a level four will appear. However, you can prevent that from happening. The way you prevent that from happening is um, th this node isn't ready to make a level uh, four appear. So I can't really show you exactly how to do it, but I'll show you what, what to do. We can mine from this five times, correct? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna mine from it four times instead. So instead of holding down the button, you mine one less time than you normally could from it. Three and four. And then you would stop. You would not mind that again. Capiche? And then you would go on to the next thing. Let's say this was at level red. This so I can mine four times with max geology. So I only want to mine it three times. Nice dragon bane ch chunk. That's the method you're going to use. However, I'm going to go ahead and mine these fully. Let's go ahead and get it into the red gauge. And I'm going to stop talking right now, um, just in case it takes a while and I have to edit these clips together. But I'm going to get both of these into the red gauge, and we're going to do it uh, again so you can see what I mean about the rewards. Uh, there it is, Crystallized Elder Dragon Bolt. That is a... Oh, no, 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 that's a regular reward. Uh, we'll get there in a second. Woohoo, more Kelby. But anyways, I'm going to carry on, and I might edit it out right here uh, for something else when we're done. All right, I just want to make the point here that I actually overmined my coral region. So um, you saw where the mining was red, and now it reset. So I made one of the large level 4 ones appear, and that's why it didn't... Um, my trick didn't work so now this gauge has reset so you'll see that's the large one right there we can go ahead and mine it now because the whole point of it is not to make it appear in the first place yeah 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 I know I know I know I know I know but now see here now all the new mining spots are level one see how tiny it is and you basically do that to get it back up to the red. Uh, but anyways, I'm going to stop this clip here, and I'll make sure I get it right with the bones. It's the same thing with the bones. It's just with the bones, with max geology, you can collect five times. So when you're doing the trick, you only want to collect four. With the mining, you can collect maximum four times with geology skill, and you only want to collect three. But I'll show that in a second with the bones so we can all be fair and square and up to date. All right. Be right back. All right, and uh, just to clarify, in case I misspoke, and I do sometimes, guys, I don't mean to. Um, just sometimes I'm on thought 15, but word six, you know what I mean? Um, but anyways, um, 
So what we want to do, back to this map over here, see in the coral region, the third one down, I have my mining and my bones now are in the red. And that's exactly what you want to do. You want to build up from level 1 to level 2 to level 3, get both of these mining uh, factors into the red. And uh, you just don't want to complete them. See, the ones, the rest of my regions have the exclamation points. That's because uh, the level 4, the super large uh, mining and bone piles are available, but we don't want that. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to mine those not to fulfillment. Uh, what you typically have to do is back out of the guiding lands, come back in, and basically you're always going to keep those nodes active. So I will switch out to the next scene. All right, back in the guiding, li guiding lands. And um, just to recap this little trick, um, you know, once you get everything into the red, uh, the way that bar moves up is if you complete, completely mine the bone pile or uh, the uh, the mining pile, the crystals, and so now we're just not going to completely mine them. And you don't need to eat for the uh, reoccurring things anymore um, because these piles are pretty much just going to always be active. Okay, so this is a mining. We can mine this four times with geology, so we only want to mine this three times. Make sure you don't hold circle in case you overshoot it. And look, we got a coal chunk, nice big reward. We got a guiding reef crystal. That's what you get from the level four large one. We just got that from a level three one, okay? And now we're gonna do it one more time. Three, got our reef crystal. We don't wanna do it the fourth time. We just wanna keep it there, keep it active. Collect your bugs. Now we have a bone pile. This we can do five times, so let's do it four times. One. A tool. Oh, we got something good. Uh, crystallized Elder Dragon Bone. Just uh, 700 uh, resource points. Just a lot of resource points. Three. And four. Alright. Move on to the next thing. Collect research on the way, collect bugs, avoid the silver rathalos. Let's go ahead and gilly it up. All right, we're going to do this one three times, but collect the bug. One. Something good. Two. Three. Something good. Yes, sir. Chunks, chunks and chunks of dragon vein coal. Excellent. So that's what we're basically doing. We're farming all the good stuff without having to cycle one through three constantly. You know, and you can get the Guiding Reef bones and the crystals um, that you get in those nodes. They're just rare, but they're always active. Four here. One. Two. Three. Four. Oh, something good. Something good. Guiding Reef Dragon Bone. That's the thing you get from the large bones. Now, you just got it from a level 3 one. And it's still going to be active because we just collect. And then you back out and restart again. Uh, and like I said, this is a slightly different farm. Uh, I think I already collected from that, right? Yeah. If I didn't, if you're ever not sure, just don't do it. Or, you know, you, you don't have to get your gauge all the way full into the red like I did. Uh, my my guiding bones, I could probably mine two of those and not worry about it. Um, as long as it's in the red, then you're good to do this trick. Okay, so we just got a bunch of good stuff, and I'm going to end this clip right now, and let's come back and do it all again. And here we go again. One. Something good. Two. three and these we're gonna do four. Oh, oh well I guess they do expire my bad I thought they didn't never mind they do um, but the same concept you're just gonna run around to whatever active nodes that there are and uh, there'll always be some active nodes you know there we go one two something good Bunch of research, three, and a four. 
And we stop. So, my point is, the good point I was going to get to, you can literally do this in every single region. Every single region, get it to be in the red bar. And then, if you wanted to, you could go and create, and there are many online that you can look into, but they're not necessary. Um, but you can create paths to go from one to the other. But really, you get to a point where you have enough reef crystals or this crystal or whatever, and the main thing you're just getting out of these things are uh, dragon vein coals and maybe some research. Uh, and then you can literally go to any area, do it, just know how many you need to uh, mine. So basically all your bones, you can mine four times with your geology skill max now. If it's not max, it'll only be three. Um, but yeah, that's about it. And if you ever lose track, like I kind of lost track on that one, just be on the safe side so you don't mess up the whole thing. Um, and yeah, that's about it. The entire guiding lands will just be giving you the maximum rewards for each type of node, mining or bones. And you have decent a decent enough chance on each node to get the level 4 giant growth, even though you're not spawning them. Come get my little raider bro, dude. Not Raider, bro. Yeah, I got you, Lakas. I love these guys. Look at their faces. They're amazing. I don't love them. Anyways, um, but yeah, every single node in the game can now be exploited for uh, the maximum rewards that they offer, and you just run around and collect those. Uh, you don't even have to eat for Harvester, or not Harvester, but the one that uh, made the nodes show up faster. Yeah, Harvester. Once you have everything in the red, um, you're just running around and going from region to region, or like I said, I literally just do uh, the coral and, um, well, I guess I'll just show it here. And this is why we have the Gilly Mantle. And then the uh, ice region is right up here. And I'm usually wearing my evasion, not evasion mantle, but uh, assassin's hood so I can run quickly. And then I just do these two areas. And there's other uh, ways you can do this. I like these two because uh, I like the ice region. Uh, usually has some good tempered tracks. Uh, but it's got these mite seeds. Uh, it's got a lot of good thing, uh, Magda Garora, whatever it's called. Um, and yeah, just the same thing. You just cycle through and get these crystals to where they're going to be in the red and carry on that way. Okay, I'm going to end this clip here and we'll go on to the next one. All right, now uh, let's go back to this geology glitch, which might be one of the best glitches in a game ever, really. Um... Before we showcase it, I uh, just was mentioning earlier about having, you know, a set to fight the monsters to collect their parts rather than your gathering set. I actually have two. I have one that has just one level of geologist but still max part breaker and one that has max geologist and max part breaker. Um, Geo 3 is what I use when I do this solo and a lot of times uh, when it was important to mine all the nodes, I would do these runs solo. Um, so Geo 3 is the one I would use. So I could keep all my nodes where I want them to and mine them the appropriate number of times as I was battling monsters and breaking up their parts. Uh, and one of the reasons this glitch is so wonderful, guys, it's not just like the trance hides and the glimmer pelts and the annihilating great horns that you need to get um, that once you have a certain number of it you don't really bother with them uh, but these monsters in the guiding lands drop uh, great spirit vein gems you know the stuff that you do the runer nergigante quest for uh, they drop elder spirit vein bones the stuff you're going to need to meld uh, seal face stones and for other upgrades and so forth uh, and if you're doing this in a group which is when you want to use the geo one set um, you're going to get so many of these drops. Like, literally on one Elder Dragon, I've gotten as many as six, seven Great Spirit Vein gems. And that was rare, but you'll often get, I'd say, two to five on most fights, you know? Uh, tons of Elder Spirit Vein gems. And remember, you're getting them and you're picking them up twice with this glitch, you know? Uh, so basically, yeah, have two of these sets. One with Max Geologist, so you can do it solo when you want to keep your nodes where they want to. Uh, one with just one when you're just focused on uh, doing parts. And uh, we're just going to go straight into a run. I'm going to narrate that, and that'll pretty much close out our video. Um, so I'm sorry if I left the, the best for last or whatever, but... 
I really feel like this, along with the node information, but the geo glitch uh, just makes farming the guiding lance so much easier and so much quicker than it would without, and it's just it's just a wonderful way to farm so many different things. And as per usual, start off my fights on the raider mount and want to start off with a flint shot, so get that aerial hit to get the extra mounting credit I suppose whoop give him the slipperoo tenderize shaver jewel is amazing and get on the ground usually every one of these wall bangs um, pretty much results in a shiny drop so it'll definitely be something you can collect twice there we go. And make sure you tenderize whatever part you guys are going to wall bang. Uh, see, there, there goes a shiny back there. I'll go pick it up here in just a second. Um, for example, if you tenderize the tail along with the head, um, or whatever part you really need to collect something from, let's say uh, you need a tail or something from the wings, tenderize that part before you do the flint shot, and it does extra parts damage to that part and makes it much, much easier to... Um, here we go. See? Picked it up once, picked it up twice. And do it again. And what did we get? Trance hide. Oh, we already got an Elder Vein Spirit Bone. Wonderful, wonderful. So... Trans hides. I think so. I can't see the writing because when I do these voiceovers, it's kind of small. And I'm back on my couch or reclining chair. Ah, uh, that's why I don't have a PC. I'm not a PC gamer, guys. I can't do it. I mean, I love it. Don't get me wrong. I love PC gaming, but I need to be laying back, chilling when I play games. I don't. I don't want to be sitting upright in a chair. I want to be not late laying down. I get sleepy, you know. <laughs> Go ahead and get the mount when he gets enraged. And that's that, you know, first few minutes of domination. Flint shot, flint shot. Rage, mount, derage, flint shot, re enrage, another mount. And by the time you get all of that done, the fight's pretty much pretty much over. Not much left of him after that. Alright. Where's my shinies? The shiny drops uh, don't happen as often in the beginning of the fight. I guess it has maybe has some kind of HP modifier. The higher their HP currently is, the less drops you get. But as you start uh, wearing them down, it gets uh, you get more and more drops. At least that's what it seems like to me. See, there's two more right there. And these drops are not uh, like base game and uh, story mission like, uh, you know, when you're in the Ancient Forest or stuff like that. A lot of those drops and parts are based on breaking certain parts and then you get them. Um, a lot of these drops that you get are just on really chonky, damaging hits. It doesn't specifically have to break anything or, you know, you, you just get a lot. It's a mechanic of the Guiding Lands. Uh, that's the first thing I noticed when I first came into the Guiding Lands is how many drops you would get. And I was like, this is insane. And then uh, I'm a little bit of a geek about these things, you know. I'm like I said, I'm fans of uh, Jin Jinx and Tuna uh, and, you know, Team Darkseid and all these guys. So I looked into a lot of this stuff when I started farming the Guiding Lands and I heard about the geology glitch and was pretty much implementing that immediately and was able to get, uh, you know, just, you know, especially when it comes to we weapon augmentation, that's it, usually the first thing most people want to get. Uh, and if you do these methods that we've been explaining throughout this video, uh, you're just going to get through all of that faster uh, while doing other good things like, uh, I don't know how much honey, mite seeds, adamant seeds, god bugs, bitter bugs, um, uh, you know, regular potions, even though I don't use them anymore. Uh, I mean, all of that is unnecessary. Well, the seeds aren't, and some other things aren't. But once you start doing the steamworks for the highest rewards, which you do because of these methods of getting dragon uh, vein coal chunks, you know? Uh, so you always have that as an availability. You get amazing rewards for that and things you can convert into uh, amazing rewards. If you haven't seen my video on how you can turn the Steamworks into sealed face stones, uh, check that out. I'll include that in the uh, 
uh, comments below. Uh, and along with that, I usually put another link that has all my guides, so if you're interested. And all these shiny drops, I'm picking up twice. I'm sorry I haven't been paying attention to... what. Uh, yeah, another Elder Vein Spirit Gem. Um, the Great Spirit Vein Gems are more rare, of course, but I've probably already picked up... I haven't really been looking, but at least three separate times I think I've seen those gems, uh, and I picked them up twice. That's six of them I've already gotten, at uh, bare minimum. I've, like I said, it's kind of hard for me to see the screen when I'm doing these voiceovers because it shrinks down a little bit. Uh, and I'm laying back and chilling. <laughs> um, but I think, uh, I don't, unless you guys really want to see the rest of this fight, uh, maybe I'll let it run. But I, that's pretty much the points I wanted to make. Um, a lot of my videos are like this, guys. Uh, they're, they're pretty long. They're pretty informative. I tend to ramble a little bit, stutter a little bit. My bad. Um, but this, you know, we're all kind of biased by certain things and one of them is like our own viewpoint and I like videos like this so this is just kind of the content like I like to I like to make you know the longer form stuff the more detailed stuff um, showing things mentioning things all that kind of stuff and that's what you're gonna get from my channel uh, along with streaming I'm really really been enjoying streaming this game and Tekken um, and I'm working on just you know making some shorter videos too that are more like the 8 to 15 minute range rather than everything being an hour long things like that um, but I really like to have stuff that I can not necessarily watch but just put on and listen to sometimes I fall asleep to YouTube videos sometimes you know listen to them in the shower in the car things like that like I don't know I'm really uh, uh, not very fond of a lot of entertainment nowadays so I just kind of find the stuff I like and carry it around with me you know <laughs> and I love Monster Hunter I mean that's why I do this that's why I bring you this information and I know a lot of people are going to be like I knew this I knew that I knew that but a lot of you I know aren't because you know we are all different levels of gamers, you know. Some of us really enjoy certain aesthetics and parts of gaming. Some of us include, uh, you know, like other parts that are maybe things that have a bit more depth rather than just gameplay stuff. Like I, that's why I love games like this. I like, um, I like the gameplay loop. I like that these weapons are kind of easy to pick up for the most part. Some are, are more advanced, but they're designed to be that way for people to have a long experience with this game you know you have multiple types of weapons and uh, multiple difficulties in using them that's that's kind of by design everybody um, but anyways uh, these a lot of these weapons are easy to pick up and you know require some time to master and um, some don't but you know that's fine too and you know you have a very very intricate build system that goes behind this game and then you add the graphics and the little nuances like uh, poison blobs just pouring out of their mouth when they're poisoned and um, how weighty and how uh, you know how heavy these weapons feel like when you do big powerful attacks uh, and see this giant stun effect you know that's something that rise and sunbreak didn't didn't kind of give me and you know it just was a different type of game you know uh, I really enjoyed Monster Hunter World in the beginning because I liked the long epic epic boss fight feel to it you know it's kind of like um, a more you know engaging shadow of the Colossus where you're just constantly fighting these giant things you know and I didn't do a lot of the side missions or the gathering quests and I'm never gonna have all the trophies in this game I'm actually gonna working on a video uh, where I talk about um, just the state of gaming and how I think people just have uh, a lot of people have a mindset towards gaming that is just going to disallow them from having fun with the game regardless of how they might actually feel about this game or any game and um, how they play it and interact with it you know this this culture of beating a game as quickly as humanly possible and showing it on stream or like you complete a game when you beat it you know that mentality um I'm just it's not where i come from you know like games you love you play you replay uh, i don't play every single game out there nor will i ever uh, i'll play four to six games a year but there'll be games that i love and those are going to be the games that i i super do deep dives and make content for and uh i've mentioned it for uh, other streams and videos uh monster hunter wilds for sure uh fighters i love my street fighter i love my tekken i will always have um interest and always be playing those games in, in any iteration or at least give it a try, even though Street Fighter V I, I, I barely touched because I hated it from the get-go. But Street Fighter VI I'm really enjoying, and uh, Akuma is going to be a game-changer for that game for me. Um, 
Shadow of the Earth Tree, uh, Elden Ring was my first FromSoft game uh, that I really, really, really got into. Not just played with or dabbled with or tried to beat, but really, really got into. Um, and, uh, you know, there's some sports game. I'm, I'm a FIFA player. I like hockey games, but I don't know. Just getting tired of those games that just feel like the same game with a different shell. Whereas I felt like back in the days when there was some competition between those games and developers, they were able to create uh, better products and more innovations and uh, varying gameplays from version to version that just doesn't happen anymore, you know. And if anything, games get worse and worse now. Like every Madden that comes out is like worse than the last instead of better in any way you know uh 2k things like that that's why these franchises are dying you know um uh, let's see and what is on the rise is franchises like ufc and things like that because you know the newer games newer uh gameplay mechanics um then you know things like madden and things like that so anyways i'm working on that kind of stuff too uh I'm really just trying to fill time for this fight to go by, but I think I'm just going to cut that short and end this stream. I just wanted to, or not stream, this video. Thank you for guys for joining me. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed this kind of stuff. Uh, always the most awkward part for me to add into a video. But all that stuff means the world to me. It gets... Uh, my channel buzz is, is pretty low because I'm just a small channel and I don't get a lot of... Um, you know, I don't get a lot of impressions. I don't get a lot of uh, times to be in front of your options when you're looking for something, you know. But when I do, I have really good percentages of viewerships and likes and uh, watch times and things like that, you know. Um, so all these likes, comments, things like that um, are really helpful for that. But other than that, I just really, really, really love conversations about games that I love, you know. Positive, negative, agreeing, disagreeing, I don't care. If it's a uh, gaming is such a lifelong passion of mine and I'll I'll always be a gamer, and when it comes to games like Monster Hunter World, uh, Tekken, uh, Street Fighter, uh, most Final Fantasies throughout history, uh, I mean, not so much some of the later ones, but uh, even up to like, you know, 12 and 14, I mean, there's a lot of good content in those areas and things like that. Um, but what else? Uh, Shadow of the Earth Tree, I've mentioned. Monster Hunter Wilds. You know, I was a big uh, fan of things like XCOM and just games that are a bit deeper and have mechanics. I like breaking down mechanics. It's a very enjoyable part of gaming for me. Uh, and that's what I'm going to try to bring to you in my channel. I don't always try to bring you the same information as everybody else. Or if I do have similar information than everybody else, I leave try to explain it a bit more clear or try to bundle it up in like you know these five things are good to learn together and that's the whole point of this video was to show efficiency in uh, hunting in the guiding lands there might be a better individual way to do everything I just showed but when you can do all of this stuff in the same area together with the same build or, or slight changes in your build that you can do in camp uh, it just makes for a much better experience than um, maybe not knowing some of these things and these things taking double triple maybe even longer uh, frustration you know that's what I meant about the space in between your ears earlier a lot of grindy games people will stop playing even though I'm a fan of grindy games I just don't like them to be overly grindy you know and this game is kind of grindy but um, it's so enjoyable it's worth it it was worth every minute of it and I'm not gonna stop playing this game until wilds come out and if wild wilds come out I might play that thor thoroughly and still come back to this game but I have a feeling uh, with the development team that's doing Wilds and their track record, that Wilds is going to be the greatest Monster Hunter game of all time. It's going to be absolutely amazing. If you loved World, if you loved Rise or Sunbreak, I think it's just going to add so much more. Uh, it definitely be more of a World-type game, um, but it's going to be the greatest game of all time you know, top two contention, because if this game is what it is as it is, uh, and given the track record of this development team and how serious they take their work and, and the way they approach this game and Wilds, I have no doubt that they're going to bring us just an amazing, amazing piece of uh, work of art, really, really. Um, well, that's about it. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to let the rest of this video play out so you can see the rest of this fight, uh, but I think I have said enough in this probably too long video. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Thanks again for joining me, and see ya.